Evening, everybody. Evening. Please ignore the mess. <laughs> I've been meaning to get up to this room all day. Actually, every single Monday, is it or is it not so, that we've done this through the whole of January. I've apologised for the mess in my room. So that we've done this through the oh, whole of God. January. I've apologised for the mess in my I've apologised for the mess in my room and I have uh, apologised for looking a mess. And it was funny, somebody said to me the other day, God, it's really weird when you do those body image. So many of the lives that you do, you make absolutely no effort with the way that you look. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I don't, because what, what, what the hell? Am I going to sit here all made up and looking like... Ha, ah, TV me. What was that going to do for anyone? <laughs> no, these chats here, if this is your first time here, is just, um, I hope some men join. It's mostly met women, but I hope some men join. I think some men will be watching without joining. Um, Mark and I are going to do one together soon, actually, because this, this, this stinking thinking doesn't only affect women, does it? It affects men as well. Um... But if this is your first time here, I would say um, maybe go back over the over the uh, first three because there's so much that we've talked about there and I've really set up in the first episode what we're doing and how that a lot of what we're doing has been um, from my experience of going to OA. Over it's anonymous, which is very like AA or any of those sorts of things, and is not just for people that overeat. It's for people that have um, real issues, disordered eating or issues with their body. And, and every week I say, please don't think this is only for people that are overweight. It's not, because as I say every week, you, I meet, meet supermodels. I meet actresses, movie stars who all have the same shit going on. So it's not actually about the way we look, it's the way that society puts so much importance on it. And yes, we can absolutely intellectualise it all and say, you know, it's crazy, we're grateful, we're not, uh, you know, this, 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 this stomach gave me a beautiful baby or I've got a warm house or I've got a good job or I've got whatever. Yes, we know that, we know that. We know that and we know that we should just be grateful for what we've got and all of that. But that doesn't stop the intrusive thoughts. And those intrusive thoughts, I believe, really stop us living the life that we could live. And I think sometimes there is real comfort in repeating the same negative thinking because within the repetition, there's a familiar anxiety. And rather getting a new anxiety, we go back to our uh, a familiar one now. I am not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counsellor, I have absolutely no credentials whatsoever. So if your problems are deeper than this, I really advise that you contact a professional. What this is, is just me sharing my experience and the experiences of people that write in with their stories about their particular feelings around their body. And we've had lots of different kinds and I just, I've been overwhelmed. After every one of these, I, f I felt like really strange. I felt like really inspired because you remind me of how I have to keep on track. Inspired, but also I felt sad. I felt hopeful. So I have an awful lot of feelings at the end of each one of these. So expect that. Expect that. Right. So. Everybody's saying hello to each other and that's fabulous. But now, once I am reading out somebody's story, if you can have no cross-chatting about anything other than the person who is whose story I'm reading, because a lot of people go through a lot, I think, to write these stories to us. So it's really important that we're mindful and, and you know, of, of that. Um, so... Uh, First of all, I just thought I would read the end of this person's letter first because I think it's quite a little, it's a good little catch up for somebody that might have just been joining today for the first time. Um, and I don't know whether you wanted your name mentioned. So if you recognise it's you and you want me to say your name, I will, but otherwise I'm going to keep it anonymous. 
So we'll go back to your letter afterwards, but I just wanted to say at the end, um, she said some nice things to me, so thank you very much. I won't read that out because I'll just feel a bit laugh. Um, but she says, she does say, this is a great place to come. It feels safe and secure and somewhere we can talk openly about our issues and get support and help and advice just by listening to other stories. That's the only advice you will get is by listening to other stories, guys, and always looking for the similarities, not the differences. If somebody's 25 stone and you are and you are hating yourself because you're seven stone, or if somebody's got hates the fact that they've got really long legs and you hate your elbows, whatever. Don't look for those differences. Look for where there might be similarities, where the emotions might be might be similar um, because that's the way that you can get the little light bulbs going off um, just by listening to other stories. And as you said, Nadia, listening, at, listening out for the similarities. Oh, thank you. Um, my advice to the younger women would be do it now while it's easier before you develop any related health issues. I think she's talking particularly about weight. Uh, sending you love and to all the wonderful ladies in this group and especially lovely Natasha, whose story you read out the other evening. So that was sort of the end. Um, but let's go back to the beginning of a story. So if this is your first time here, I'm reading out this person's body story and um, I just want you to listen really listen and think god that's what i do or that's what i think because sometimes when you hear the insanity of somebody else's stinking thinking and repetitive thinking and intrusive thoughts it helps you recognize your own and over the last few weeks we've talked about when you hear those like the trolls that we let live for free in our head when you hear them coming up just start you know after tonight like tomorrow if you if you hear those voices come in just go oh, i noticed that I noticed that. I noticed that. That's what that's what I do. That's how I've quietened 20, 30, 40, 40 voices down to one or two occasionally. My body acceptance has come that way. Well, and a lot of other things. But anyway. So, um mm, 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 so I'm ashamed to say, why do we always start with saying something dreadful about ourselves? Don't be ashamed. At the age of 65, I'm still struggling with body issues. But it's heartening to hear of all the younger women as well here trying to tra tackle the problem before they get too old and slide into a life of ill health due to bad lifestyle choices. I was lucky as I was very slim in my younger days. As a child, I was positively skinny because I was from a really big family and there was never enough food. So I've just got to stop there, just for a second, because I want, I'm going to call this person Sophie, because we don't know your name. So I'm just going to call you Sophie, unless you want me to call your real name. I was lucky. As a child, I was positively skinny. There was never enough food. I was constantly hungry. What's lucky about that? That's not lucky. That was really hard. To be a child that's really hungry. That's our worst, you know, that's a nightmare for any parent. That's a nightmare. Try and turn that back round. If that was your children, you would have just waited. Oh my God, you'd just be mortified, wouldn't you? It's like the hardest thing for a parent for their child to be hungry. It's not a lucky thing. But that's that stinking thinking that we're, that we're given. Oh God, well, I was lucky. Because I was hungry as a child, so I was skinny. Do you hear how we do that, don't we? It's like, I remember once, years and years ago, a friend of mine was going off to India. And I, I swear to God, this is what I thought. I thought, God, I'm going to be so envious if she gets dysentery and just loses all that weight. Not all that way, she wasn't fat, but just loses weight. I was going to be envious if she got dysentery. I remember once when norovirus was going around years ago, this was an ITV building, and actually running my hand up and down the handrail and then the mat on my hand to try and get it. <laughs> when you look back, you just think, God. 
God. What was the, our society doing to us that we thought like that? And so, you know, he would be, see, so I've seen the similarity there. I haven't seen the difference. I wasn't starving as a child. I wasn't not given food, but I saw the similarity because I wanted to get dysentery or I wanted to get norovirus so that I would be sick, have diarrhea, lose weight. It's, it's, a, it's a similar madness that's different, but it's a similar madness, isn't it? It is mad, isn't it? I remember not being able to sleep from my stomach rumbling. But Sophie thought thinks now when she looks back, she was lucky. You weren't lucky. That was hard. Consequently, I married aged only 19 to escape the chaos that a big family brings. Once I had the keys to my own kitchen and could buy my own food, I gained weight. I'm so glad you could buy food and you could eat and you weren't hungry. That's a good thing. Um, of course I did, but I made, I made up for all the food I'd missed out on as a child and the weight piled on. Over the years, I had three gorgeous children and struggled to lose weight. But then I found Jane Fonda didn't we all in the 80s wasn't that a nightmare doing that blooming video every day and trying to live on bloody salad and I got into fitness in a big way I had 10 or 15 fabulous years feeling great about myself as I was slim strong and fit um my, then my youngest child developed a massive brain tumor and I gained four stone in a year from comfort eating as he was so ill Unimaginable. Totally unimaginable. I was talking to a woman the other day. She came up to me in a restaurant and she said, told me that a 10-year-old had a brain tumour. And, you know, I, was, I said to her, I, I don't even know how you're still standing. I said, if my child gets a headache, I'm in a mess. And she said, yeah, he had two 10-hour operations on his brain. That is beyond any... It's just, it's just, it's just horrendous to go through something like that. And you ate because you were in, I imagine, in and out of hospitals, chaotic um, sleeping patterns, desperately sad, frightened. And food is sometimes a great comfort. You know, it is. Just like for other people, sometimes a bottle of gin is a great comfort. Sometimes for other people, a great comfort is drugs. Other people, it's multiple prescription drugs. You know, in times of great distress, some some people, I'm one of them, turn to self-medicating. And mine really was my primary was um, food, but it was also alcohol for many years before I had my kids. So um, that will have, I imagine, been the very most difficult year of your entire life. The fact that you gained weight isn't isn't nice. Of course it's not. You loved feeling strong and fit. And, and, you know, when I talk about body acceptance, I'm not talking about, you know, giving up and not 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 trying to be, as the, you know, a fit and healthy, strong person. So I, I can imagine that's really hard after 15 years of working it and feeling really great. Since then, I yo-yosed yo as I'm an emotional eater and I believe a food addict. You use food to uh, medicate, but don't you? I mean, do you recognise that yourself? And I'm sure people listening now, they're going to hear the similarities there. When do I eat for another reason other than when I'm hungry? When do I eat when I'm emotionally hungry? And I think many people do that. Some people I know go the other way and they starve themselves when they are when things feel out of control and when they feel like their emotions are all over the place, they go the other way. So I think um, that is very relevant. Maybe there'll be somebody here that doesn't have a problem with eating, but maybe they hear the similarity in that they use alcohol or drugs or cigarettes or sex. That I mean, the reason why I'm breaking this up a bit is I just want to help people understand more about looking for hearing the similarities so you can hear your own, you know, your own stinking thinking. Um, um, I'm currently almost the heaviest I have been. Um, I'm not actually going to say what weight you are because it doesn't actually, it, it, it's not relevant here. It's not relevant. Um, 
and having battled some health issues recently. Oh, God, I'm not surprised. Stress you've been under. I really don't want to give up at 65. 65? This is the bit when it's all for you. You've brought up the kids. Certainly not giving up at 65. I'm 60 this year and I'm revving up. Um, I, de I want desperately to be fit and strong and lean again, but it certainly gets more difficult as you get older. No doubt about it. I'm not going to bullshit you. It gets more difficult. It's, it just does. Um, my joy are my seven grandchildren and, and in their eyes, I'm perfection. Well, exactly. But in my eyes, I'm a mess and a big disappointment. What would you say if one of your grandchildren came up to you and said, and they'd had the most horrendous year, right? And they'd put on weight and uh, they were using food to get them through their emotions and they're really wanting to get back to exercise. And they were telling you all this and they were crying and they were like, so, felt so bad. And they said, I'm a total disappointment to myself. Because I suspect you would have something to say to them about that. And I would suggest that whatever that is, you would turn around and say it to yourself because you are not worth less than your beautiful grandchild that you adore. You are, she, she is part of your creation. My yoga teacher just was so, at the yoga workshop the other day, she really, something really dropped in for me when she was like, she was talking about going to your best self and feeling your best self and your true self. And I thought, well, what is my best self? What is my true self? I was sitting there omming and just thinking, well, I don't know. So I had a bit of a chat with her about it afterwards and she said, everything that is around you that gives you joy, you created. You played a part in creating that. You know, so your seven grandchildren that you adore oh, didn't just come down, didn't just come down with the rain, did they? You you created that. If you've got a nice cozy corner in your house, if you had a nice you're creating amazing things every day so you are as amazing as your grandchildren and so what you would say to them say to try it i mean as i say i'm not a professional i'm just sharing with you the things that i've done to try and and things that i've heard for some for some really clever people and some of the therapists that i've been to and just passing on some of the stuff it's just a suggestion see how it goes um uh, uh, in my eyes, I'm a mess and a big disappointment. Can you? Can I just say one thing to you? Sophie, we're calling you. Can you try never to say that to yourself again? Not never, because a lot. Just say and reduce that. Think of a different word. It doesn't have to be amazing, like, oh my God, I'm the most incredible person. But just swap that word out, disappointment, for something else that's a bit, little bit, not so harsh. Because if you're really harsh and you're hitting yourself the whole time, it doesn't get you anywhere. It just makes you feel worse. And you know what? It then makes you self-medicate again. And what with? Food. So the more horrible you are to yourself... Oh, her name's... Oh, Beth. Hello, Beth. The more horrible you are to yourself, I would suggest that that makes you feel worse about yourself, which reduces your self-esteem, which makes you reach for the chocolate or the crisps or the peanuts or the toast or whatever is. Um... Thanks, Michelle. Um, it's Beth. Welcome, Beth. But, you know, you would turn to whatever is in your, is your drug of choice. What is it? Chocolate, crisps, cheese on toast, whole packet of biscuits. What is it? Um, you know, and I do say this every week, but it, it's, I've heard it, I had to hear it so many times to, it's that repetitive retraining of your brain, isn't it? It's just like, I'm not just gonna, <laughs> here I go. oh, here I go again. <laughs> Me, got, hang on, where's my stick? Oh, it is. Um, you know, so, though I do say this every week, I really, it really, really did help me. It's like, re if you find yourself reaching for something or desperately looking for something to eat you say to yourself oh, what's going on with me emotionally you know maybe nobody ever asked you how you felt and you know how did you feel about things you know so so we we can do that ourselves we can say what do i need why am i unhappy and what am i why am i reaching this food am i angry am i tired am i lonely am i frustrated is there any tight, and if it's yes to any one of those, what tiny little things could I do? How could I, how could I distract? How could I, you know, soothe, self-soothe? Do you remember each week we do our, our hug? You know, to just do that. Oh my God, it's so nice. 
a pat and soothe. It's amazing. We can self-soothe. We can. Um, my youngest son who survived his brain tumour. Oh, my God. That's so joyful. I'm happy to say he's getting married in a few months in Spain and I am starting to panic. When I think about how I'll look on the day, if I don't sort myself out. Right. No. 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 This is, this for me epitomises what we do to ourselves. Right? Your son, who had a brain tumour and has survived it, and not only survived it, but he's thriving because now he's going to get married. This, how much higher a high can you get, right? This is totally incredible. And you are stepping on a road to steal that from yourself because you think you've got to look a certain way for the wedding. It's not about the way that you look. It's the feeling. It's This is incredible. Totally incredible. What the hell? Don't live, let a nasty little troll live in your head of your own creation and tell you that you've got a panic. No, you don't got panic. You are the grandmother, the matriarch of seven grandchildren. Take your place, whatever size you are. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, be, be you know, do exercise to feel stronger and healthier. You know, look after your skin. Um, eat as well as you can, but do not, do not, do not, do not attach your weight to this great event. I promise you, I promise you, I tell you what, you will 100% set yourself up to fail. My whole adult life, every single holiday with my children was in a way lost to me because I was thinking about how I looked in a swimsuit and I was saying how disgusting I was and I was saying and I was saying that to myself all the time and Mark was the one jumping in and out of the pool with them and Mark was the one running around the pool with them I wanted to but I allowed a troll or 500 to steal that time with my children who ask yourself this right who do you need to look a certain way for? Outside of you just wanting to look your best, which is fine, who is it? Because nine times out of ten, when we really drill into that, it, it, it's for a load of people that probably aren't even going to notice. It's like I said, you know, all those times I wouldn't walk around a pool, I wouldn't walk to the swimming pool and get in with my children. What? For a load of people that are have got all their own shit going on. You know? And and so what? So what if somebody thought, oh, she's a bit fat? Or you've got my cellulite? So what? Am I gonna I'm gonna let that steal my time with my children? Yep, that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. And that's why you will see so often women sat around the pool, and I don't get me wrong, it's great that you play with them most of the time, but sometimes it would have been good if uh, sat around the pool while their husbands are doing all the fun things with the kids. Carla Martin, true Nadia, but easier said than done. It is not easy. I am not saying it's easy at all, but what I am saying is you have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if you aren't yet sick and tired of thinking that way and being that way, then you're not ready. But if you are really sick and tired of it, and if you really, really don't want to ruin this summer holiday or this wedding or this, then you can make changes bit by bit by bit by bit. It's layers. It's, it's layers. Pastry. I love pastry. Don't get me on pastry. <laughs> it's layers and layers and layers and layers, isn't it? So, so just keep trying to say to yourself, 
Don't go out buying a dress three size smaller. Don't be doing all of that because all you're going to do is ruin the run up to this wedding. You know, you say here that you're going to look into intuitive eating. Do look into intuitive eating, um, you know, and just because you want to be healthier, look into gut health. All of you follow um, Hannah Richards on the Gut Clinic in, in on Instagram. She's really good on helping people with gut health. If your gut health is good, then, you know, you just do, you lose weight as a side effect. Um, massively increase the amount of fibre that you eat. Um, and, you know, if you're drinking half a bottle of wine every night, just have one glass. If you're having three cakes, maybe just have one. You know, it's kind of like that, just getting a bit bent. But don't go on some mad-ass diet and buy a dress three sizes too small because you're going to ruin it. And this is amazing. And well done you, Mama. What a mama. Seven grandchildren. And, and a son that went through that. Can't even imagine. Um, and she says here she's going to check out Intuitive Eating and the Zoe program. All of those things are really good. Uh, money is tight. The best way, the cheapest way to eat is cooking simple foods from scratch. Processed foods are the most expensive way to eat. Dina, you know, because I thought you know you watch Curly Cooks. Dina's budget is tiny on her weekly food. Tiny. And she eats delicious food so you know um you don't have to you don't have to um break the bank in fact you mustn't and have delicious food and not you know not leave yourself short so Bev, please i hope that you keep checking in with us i think we're all praying here that you don't let this imaginary fig what is this person that you want to look like who is it? You know, you know, if if maybe you could just start saying to yourself, I just want to feel a bit stronger and a bit weller for the wedding. You know, so I'm just going to eat as well as I can. I'm going to start a little bit of exercise bit by bit. Don't suddenly go mad and like pull a muscle or something, just bit by bit. And I want to feel really mentally stronger. Um, and I want to just eat well. So I've got lots of energy for the party and think like that and things fall into place eat you'd be amazed how they fall into place as soon as you go on a diet you start thinking about what you're not eating and what you wish you were eating in my experience so guys i really want to hear from you what resonated for you in that what did you go oh god i'm like that <laughs> well that's what i do did anybody have that aha moment with any of what... Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get rid of this. With any of what um, we read there from Beth. Uh, hang on. Oh, I've done the classic. Uh-oh. Hmm. Um, who did that resonate for? Very much, says Carla Martin. Thank you, uh, Nadia and all you wonderful people. Beth! Did you, was it any of that that you think, you know, just all of it, says Natasha Milchan. All of it, says Ellery Jones. This is what I love. It's like me. Okay. So here's the thing. With missing out, not liking what I look like, Steph Schultz, exactly. So not only are you not happy the way you look, you're missing out on all the other bloody things in life. On your deathbed. You're not going to be saying, oh, God, I wish I'd just looked better for the da-da-da. No, you're going to be saying, I wish I'd enjoyed all the things, all the opportunities that were there, all the moments to have fun with my friends, all the moments to be with my family, all my moments that I was with my grandchildren. And instead of just think, just looking and focusing completely on them, I'm thinking about my fat, someone I'm thinking I hate my knees, or I'm thinking that... No. Um, Ellery Jones... What were you saying there? I'm not on medication. Uh, 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 oh, that's um. Try and stick with um, the subject, guys, so we don't get too confused. Um, yeah, so for me, there was so much in that. So much in that that resonated for me. DT, for most of my life, I had no self-worth. I have now become my biggest cheerleader. Wow. 
if you had to give one tip of how you did that, how what was what would be your thing? Olivia Kelly, very much so, stressing myself to look great for someone else or worrying about how I look to someone else. I try not to, but it is hard. Right. Here's the really important thing. You mustn't... My CBT, uh, I had a very, very good CBT counsellor, and I have mentioned this before, so please forgive me, but it is in the repetition that it goes in. Um... um when you have these intrusive thoughts, it's really important because what you're trying to do is just try and re, you know, recalibrate your brain to go an opposite way. And she was, she, she did it so clearly with me. So I'll do it with you now. She's right. Okay. Nobody think about pink elephants. Whatever you do, don't, I'm going to stop thinking about, I want you to stop now thinking about pink elephants, right? I'm just not, 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 not ever, not ever, ever, ever. Are you to think of pink elephants? What are you thinking of? Pink elephants. Because, you know, when you go, oh, I'm never going to do that and I mustn't do that and I mustn't think like that and I mustn't... It does not work. It doesn't work. Because actually, that's that. it comes right to the forefront of your brain. And go, eh. so, so what she taught me and she taught my uh, one of my daughters that went to CBT and, in fact, Mark, is that Mark still can't do it. He still doesn't do it. It's really, really, really resists it. Because I remind him all the time and say... You know, this is what you say to yourself. You say, okay, noticing that thought, noticing that. I prefer it if I wasn't thinking like that, but it's okay because it will pass. Now, I didn't just do this a couple of times and I changed the way of thinking. I have done this thousands of times. Like, I'm talking about thousands of times. If you really want something, it nothing comes without work. You know what I mean? So some people just don't want to do the work and that's fine. And that is fine. And, and they still stay and still listen and still talk because I used to listen to all kinds of things and I wasn't ready to do the work. But then eventually, when I really was sick and tired of being sick and tired, lots of things have planted seeds. And I really hope here tonight seeds have been planted for you that you'll either, will either start to shoot and grow immediately or maybe even five years or maybe never for you but you might share it with your daughter or your grandson or your and it will go on and on and on because it takes a village to make change and I think you know we need to make massive changes in the world and I believe that we can I do I believe like you know small chats like this that then go out to another chat and another sort of ripple effect cause and effect and you can choose to have those ripples right in your own mind. That's And one day that happened. I did CBT. I'd been through the counselling that we got when Mark went into rehab. Um, you know, I've had many, many conversations. I went to Overeats Anonymous. I've done a lot of work. And, my God, my biggest, do you know what my biggest work is now? Is not to go, oh, my God, I wasted all those years. Because how does that serve me? That's another really good sentence. How does this serve me? How does this serve me? Is this serving me? Is this person serving me? Is this experience serving me? Is this troll I'm letting live in my head it's servicing? No, it's not actually. It's not servicing me at all. Okay, I prefer him not to be there. I prefer this not to be happening. But, you know, it's going to pass. And it's, you take the power out of it when you say it's going to pass. It's going to float by by you know it's a simple step just just i said that last week i said you know just just say notice that oh, i'm noticing that okay i prefer it when i'm not talking to myself and treat myself like that but it will pass and then do something else and distract and um exactly dion talk to yourself as you would talk to your best friend exactly to somebody you really love when people say, oh, you've got to love yourself, I want to say, oh, bog off. It's very bloody easy to say love yourself. I never say you've got to love yourself because it's like, it's like, oh, see that mountain over there? Can you just climb to the top of it? It's like, was that, is that how we're going to start? By climbing to the top of the mountain? How the fuck am I going to do that? Because I'm my dad. <laughs> so I, I never say love yourself because I know I don't work like that. Um, but... Um, I do, I, I agree, Dion, I, 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 what, how I started this was a, a very good therapist that I went to um, that was specific to women. And um, 
She made me do that. She made me sit and close my eyes. I was really angry with this therapist because I'm really one of those people that like never felt sad, wouldn't say that I've so, hated to be vulnerable. And she made me sort of bring up the image of me as a little girl and I couldn't get that. And I, so I kind of lied to her. I said, yeah, I had an image of a little girl, myself as a little girl. I didn't because I couldn't because I was like, I got a bit cringy. I was like, this feels a bit like, <laughs> feels a bit cringe. That happens a lot when you're in therapy. I go, I go, no, it's a bit embarrassing. I'll just say whatever they want to shut them up. <laughs> My homie Bath said to me once, I think it's really dangerous for you to go to counselling, Nadia, because you're completely manipulating the counsellor. <laughs> Anything I didn't want to talk about, I just wove away from it. For years, wasted money. I didn't go regularly. God, don't think I'm one of these people who's had years and years of therapy. I haven't. I've gone to therapists, paid for our course, and then gone to four sessions and not gone back. <laughs> A number of times <laughs> but then eventually I got to a place where I was sick and tired and I did want to change and so what when I lied to the therapist said yes I've got an image of myself as a child <laughs> I just got an image of another child because I, I really really love children like like I mean I really love children I, I spend more time than I am able to reveal to you on Instagram just watching children and the funny things that they say and the sweet things they say and it's just I just adore them and and I love spoiled brats make me laugh I love shy children I love cheeky children just love them so I just got an image up of a sweet girl like I could I could just adopt a child like that I just love a child immediately it's like you know my heart's aching with Palestine and everything I just want to have I just want to fill the house with children but so so I can easily bring up the image of a child right and it doesn't have to be me because I find it too difficult to do it with me I'm not ready to do that I can't and that's okay but I will like have any child and I would they would say you know I mean eventually I've got my own children so I could use them as an image um so when I had these intrusive thoughts I would imagine it was a child and then when it was I had my own children it was it was them that could I would conjure and I just instantly had the answer of what to say to them. Instantly. Instantly. You know, and it's the same thing with food, actually. It's like if my kids come in and they're tired and they're a bit down, they're a bit down, I don't say have a big slab of chocolate cake or half a thing of toast. I say, I'll make you something really nice. And I'll make like a lovely nourishing bowl. So I put it in a lovely bowl so it looks really nice. And I say, so that, so that, so that it's teaching them like self-care. Do I do that for myself? No. Not enough. I do it more than I did, but I'm still way behind. But I look at sometimes the way I put my food on the plate and I just think, wow, you've got a long way to go. <laughs> I mean, honestly, with my 21-year-old, my 16-year-old, I'm putting it, that would look nice. I'll put the green. Everything is done, beautiful plate. and da -da. May just bung it on. What's left? Scrape around the edge. Just did it tonight with dinner. Um... What little acts of self-care can you do? How can you be kind to yourself today? What could you say this week, over this week? How could I be kind to myself? What tiny little things could I say that's positive about myself? Could I say that, wow, I really loved that, how I dealt with that person today that was a bit sad. Or I liked that I wanted to smile at that person that looked a bit alone on the bus. I didn't do it because I felt shy, but I wanted to, which means my heart was like in the right place. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying to compliment yourself, to be kind to yourself. It's not about going, wow, look at me. I look fantastic. Oh my God, I just love myself. It's just little things. Actually, you know, that was real. like I might say tonight, I might say, I might go down there and I might say, do you know what? That felt like a really worthwhile thing to do today because I was sharing some of the things about me and then they gave me so much back by sharing back. So I feel good about myself. That was nice. You know, so when people say to me, thank you for doing this, I'm, I want to say thank you back because it's like, yeah, you made me feel good that I could share and share back. So look for those little things or big things in your in your soul and go back to your soul and just who you are. As my yoga teacher said, who you are is everything that's, you know, it's, it's, it's the tiny things. It's not the great big things, it's the tiny things, the tiny bits of goodness. And then accepting that, what is that good? Is that bad? 
you know, I used to worry so much when I was like, oh, I'm a really bad person. And I had the best, the best person ever said to me, yeah, of course you are. But you're so fucking brilliant. Just all things. And it was like, oh, God, what a release. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. I have to go now because I've, um, the kids want to watch Love Island with me tonight. And, um, I just made some really nice little chocolate muff muffins, healthy ones. <laughs> They're really nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make them on Instagram for you. Really nice. Way squidgy and yummy. Thank you. Michelle Penny is saying there, the link is below in the video description to submit your stories for future lives. Um, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Beth, for sharing your... Your pain, actually, there's an awful lot of pain in there. Um, and I really, really hope that some of that resonated with you tonight and you just went, yeah, actually, I do do that. And yeah, actually, if it was my friend or my sister saying, oh, but I'm just such a disappointment. Oh, God, you know, I'm getting into a panic about the wedding. No, no, no. Just be really kind to you. And thank you again. And I think everybody here, if we all say thank you to Beth, it was really, really kind of you to send that. Uh, Samantha O'Hanlon, did I receive... I've received a lot of stories. What is your particular story? Um, I may well have done, but I won't remember the name. I remember the stories, but not the names. But um, you can always resubmit it if you're worried. Oh, yeah, we did get it. Thanks, Michelle. Um... Michelle is saying that we did, Samantha, so I will read it out. Now, just to say, as I always say at the beginning here, I'm not a professional, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a counsellor, I'm not anything. So some people, I will just be sending you a little email just saying, this is a bit beyond me. Like, if I think somebody is really suffering in a, a more complicated way than we would, or I feel it's too vulnerable to discuss and I don't want to put you in a position of a of, of vulnerability then I won't do it I won't read it but anyone that I won't for those reasons I will email you and say that yeah oh god the world is full of people pretending to be bloody experts and I can't stand it and it's dangerous so yeah no this is just yeah anyway thank you for everybody who has uh, submitted and as importantly, thank you for everybody who's listened and thank you to everybody who has engaged in Beth's story and felt things and taken things from it. Because do you know what? I really do believe that there's real power in that. Something happens, takes a village. Oh, hi, Natasha. How are you, honey? Natasha Tiramos. If you haven't um, seen the first episode um, of this, or was it for a second? Um, do go back and hear Natasha's story because that was incredibly powerful and useful as well. Lots of love, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow for Coffee Moaning. And if you want a bit of a giggle, go to mine or Mark's Instagram and have a look at what we've posted tonight if you need a bit of a giggle now. And part two of it will be coming tomorrow. All right, lots of love. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Bye.